Good evening and welcome to the Southbridge Town Council meeting of Monday, September 24th, 2018. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call, Madam Secretary. Councillor Adams. Present. Councillor Eau Claire. Excused. Councillor Daniel. Councillor DiPietro. <coughs> Councillor Jovan. Present. Councillor Mana. Present. <coughs> Councillor Morales. Present. Councillor Nash. Present. Councillor Steves. Present. Having a quorum, we'll proceed. Agenda item three, considering and accept the town council meeting minutes of Monday, September 10th, 2018. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Any errors, corrections, or omissions? Councilor Mana, first. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. I am going to abstain from these. Um, I was absent on that date. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if I could just, um, if you could just reflect for the minutes, please, that Council Mana was actually excused because I did receive the text message, but my phone had died, uh, hence got a new one. But I, there was a message from her, as well as. Council Morales had also emailed me earlier that afternoon. So both of them had notice, given notice to me that they were needed to be excused. So if you could reflect that, please. Councilor Nash. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you. A couple of quick notes on agenda item 18. I think it should uh, read in reference to Chapin Court. Right. And then on page seven, uh, bolded a little more than halfway down, the meeting adjourned from executive session at 1015. <clears throat> Thank you. Any Thank other? you. Did you have another one, Councilor? That's all. Okay. Councilor Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, number four, Delta, 4D. I don't recall me uh, talking about it, discussed items 9, 10, and 15. I think I discussed those maybe at the previous meeting, but we hadn't had a meeting. I think that may have been Councilor Nash's um, <clears throat> agenda items, for, but I don't remember even mentioning those. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Steves. Yeah, yeah, and I had a couple of quick minor things. Uh, one was um, number seven, item 17. It should be section 8.102. And under item 20, it should be $3,300 on a number. Okay. Anything further? All those in favor as amended? Opposed? No. Abstain? Abstain. And two abstentions. So <laughs> Council Manor and Council Morales will be abstaining. Thank you. Subcommittee reports, General Government, <coughs> Council Steves. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we had a meeting on the 12th. Um, it was a quick one. Uh, we had a couple of quick items. Um, we talked a little bit about a transfer for $46.76 for the correct couple of bills that were both overdue from a couple, from previous uh, fiscal year 17, which was 46.76 for correctional industries and $7,989.24 for Medicaid billing transfer. Um, we briefly talked about the zoning bylaw and um, had a little concern raised about the town's electric sign um, policy, use policy. And I believe those two transfers are on the agenda tonight. Do you have a meeting scheduled? Um, yeah, I do. It's, uh, it's the 4th at 6. So October 4th at 6 p.m. Yep. Thank you. DPW, Councilor DiPietro is absent. Education and Human Services, Councilor Nash. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you, uh, a meeting of the Education and Human Services Subcommittee was held on Tuesday, September 12th. And uh, there were two items on tonight's agenda, number 14 and number 18, that resulted from work at that meeting. Uh, we have a meeting scheduled for October 10th, and I don't recall the time. It's, it's going to be posted. But I'd like to just uh, take a quick moment to thank Councillor, uh, Vice Chair of the Subcommittee, John Daniel, for uh, running that meeting since I was in attendance, but uh, under the weather. He did a fine job, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Plan and Development, Councillor Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we had a meeting on September 11th, uh, which is agenda item number 19. Next meeting is going to be October 9th, where we'll be discussing the zoning, the new zoning bylaws, and uh, there is a public hearing on the 3rd of October as well. That's all I have. Thank you. 
Um, let me make a quick what, Councilor what, Steve? Um, yeah, uh, Councilor Adams. What time is that meeting on the 9th? Because we, we've got a joint council school committee meeting that night. Yep. I believe we scheduled for 9 o'clock, or 9 o'clock, holy cow, uh, 6. So, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Protections of persons and property, Council Manna. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for you. We did have a meeting on um, September 20th, and we um, discussed the appointments of um, some police officers and some firefighters, three police <coughs> officers and two firefighters that are here tonight. We also discussed um, agenda item number 15, but however, I believe that we postponed that, so that shouldn't be, we shouldn't be discussing that tonight. Um, I just want to clarify that I will have all the minutes caught up this week, I promise. It's been a very hectic. And um, I would have to look, but I believe I have a tentative date scheduled for another PPP meeting, um, I believe, next week. Um, I have to check the date on that, though. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Chairman's announcements. I have a few announcements this evening. Uh, first, it's hard to believe that the end of our council first quarter is coming to an end. Uh, a lot of work, and thank all the councils in, uh, here for all their assistance. Um, we do have a lot of issues going forward um, to um, resolve, um, working hard, uh, and I thank you all for that. Um, just a reminder that Dressa Street Bridge work that that work will be uh, commencing in sometime in October. Just a reminder that the area of the construction will be Coal Ave to Orchard Street and that road will be closed. So make sure that you're aware that that uh, will be happening. That will go through Thanksgiving. Also, I'd like to thank Council Nash for his invitation to join him in meeting with the DPW, um, with Heather and Steve, uh, to discuss the water color issues. Uh, I learned a lot about water, about chemistry. I know my family would be happy because they're the chemistry science nerds, I'm not. Um, but the assurance is that the water quality itself, the water is, is safe, um, it's a color issue, and it all has to do with the temperature of the water in the reservoirs. And they are working to mitigate that for upcoming summers. Uh, given the fact that we've had so many days of 90 degree plus weather, even though they switch from one reservoir to the other, the warmth, and it has to do with uh, some kind of transfer when it goes into the filtration plant. But it, it was a learning experience. They are working to uh, mitigate that, and hopefully next year we'll have a resolution to that. On that same date, I dragged uh, Council Nash with me to a meeting with the receiver. He is the chairman of the EHS subcommittee, so I thanked him for uh, joining me with uh, the superintendent receiver, Jeff Villar. We had a, uh, it's a standing meeting that I'm having with the uh, receiver the day after their school committee meeting. We talked about the challenges that are facing the school district, what the challenges were with the opening of the schools this year, namely the staffing uh, issues that he has uh, with teachers, and it happens every year. Um, one of his big uh, pushes this year is to increase the culture and climate in the schools. And uh, I heard that last week um, there were a number of uh, resolutions to some of the issues that they have in the school, so I thank him for that. As was mentioned by Council Steves, we are holding uh, town council, I mean, school committee chairman Jackie Ryan had reached out to us about scheduling a joint council town uh, school committee meeting. That joint meeting will be held October 9th at 7 p.m. here. Uh, that's the school committee night due to the fact that we have so many issues on our town council agenda, especially with the reading of the zoning bylaw updates, that uh, it just made more sense to hold that meeting with the school on a school committee night. One issue that came up tonight, and I apologize to the parties that are involved, we seem to have an issue with the posting of minutes, not minutes, the posting of agendas and the scheduling of meetings. Um, in the last three months, there's been a, a few meetings that we weren't able to go forward due to how the meetings are posted. They were posted. So the meeting that we were supposed to hold earlier tonight with the Selfridge Redevelopment Authority, we, I had posted that over a month ago for the date it was reposted <clears throat> with the agenda in a timely fashion. It was posted on the, town, on the board inside the building. However, for whatever reason, it didn't go up to the website. 
This has happened a couple of times. It's frustrating to all of us because we are, namely volunteers, they're elected to serve the town and we make scheduling changes uh, to make sure that we accommodate that and for whatever reason it doesn't happen. So with that, I'm requesting that you, Council of Steve's, put this on to a general government subcommittee, your next meeting, to discuss the process of the posting of the uh, agendas. If you could, I would appreciate that. <clears throat> uh, also, the last thing that I want to just mention, and I'm sure the town manager may have some additional information on this, is trash pickup in Casella. It's no secret, this has been in the media, it's been in the newspapers, it's been a topic on social media. Uh, we do have an ongoing litigation between the town of Southbridge and Casella. Casella's position is that given the fact that the landfill will be closing at the end of the year, that their obligation to pick up trash in the town of Southbridge is coming to an end. We've uh, filed uh, litigation against them to uh, ensure that they live up to their contract, which the contract stated that they would uh, pick up trash in the town of Southbridge until 2027. We've attempted to resolve this through mediation. It's not been successful. So uh, with that end, we have a trial scheduled for the end of October. We don't know which way this is gonna go, but the town will be giving notice to the residents in a timely manner, uh, and because we uh, need to make arrangements for this. So I think that's it I, uh, for my uh, chairman's announcements. Mr. Town Manager, Town Manager's announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'm gonna kind of rearrange some of the things I was gonna talk about to kind of continue your line of discussion as it relates to the landfill and curbside collection. Uh, just to inform citizens uh, during this next week, uh, you should be receiving a postcard in the mail uh, to pretty much everyone who lives in Southbridge and those people who own property who live outside of Southbridge, you will all be receiving a postcard that explains a little bit about the case. And um, obviously we believe that we're gonna win the case and uh, we believe that uh, right now, um, SRDP and Casella are uh, basically going forward with a breach of contract. That's the issue here, because the um, agreement we have with them states that they're supposed to do curbside collection until 2027. Uh, and basically what we wanna do and what the judge has said to us is that we need to be prepared in case we do lose this case. And again, I wanna state that I don't believe that's gonna happen, but this is really up to a judge. It's not in our control. So please read the postcard. Be on the lookout for the postcard that will be in the mail. It'll explain it to you. All the information that we have is on that postcard. So calling town hall, asking for additional information really won't help because really uh, the issue is up to the judge and how he rules on this particular case. So we can't offer much more about it other than waiting for the outcome from the judge. So appreciate if you, you look at that, understand that. And the back of the postcard will give you some information what you should do to prepare yourself just in case uh, for some reason the judge decides against the town. I want to read a notice from Whitewater. Uh, they're the company that runs our water treatment facility uh, for water uh, and it says, it's a notice from them, it was posted for September 11th. It says Southbridge Charlton American Optical will be performing their annual operation and maintenance inside their facility on Wednesday, September 26, 2018 at approximately 9 p.m. The location will be affected will be around the Mechanic Street area in Southbridge. Department requests that during this period, customers check their water before washing clothes. Customers may also get accumulated sediments in their house laterals the next morning. This will clear after a brief run uh, of the water at the tap. So just run your water for a few seconds, you'll see it'll clear right up and you can go on with whatever you have to do. I wanna talk a little bit quickly about some of the things going on with the town manager's substance abuse uh, advisory committee, you will see on um, Central Street a billboard that basically is an educational billboard to uh, explain that we really need parents to work with their children and to talk to their children about substance abuse and the use of illegal drugs. Parents are quite frankly the most influential on the lives of their children and the billboard basically says that, that we want you to do everything you can to, to work with your child and talk to them about the issue. Also parents in the high school and the middle school will also be getting a brochure mailed to their homes, basically explaining how the best way is to talk to your child. Uh, the Substance Abuse Advisory Board spent a lot of time developing that, that information 
uh, to help you uh, guide your child in terms of this particular issue. Uh, so those two things that are really, really important. Also, we're going to be having banners. Uh, we'll be receiving about 14 banners that are like four by five good sized banners that we'll be spreading around town uh, that basically um, explain to educate you know, everyone about this particular issue. It's a, it's a nationwide issue. And uh, thanks to the council, they really stepped up to the plate on this one and put money behind it so that we could do everything we can to educate everybody in South Bridge about this particular issue. So they deserve tremendous credit for moving forward on this. The um, week, I believe it's of October 23rd, there'll be a week, it's called Red Ribbon Week. You can look at redribbon.org and you can find out how you can participate. Again, it's another part of, of, of learning all the things you can do to engage in this process to educate uh, people around you. Uh, all of our families and, and friends have been involved and tied into this issue. It's a very difficult issue, and we need to do everything we can to protect uh, our family members. Uh, the last thing I wanted to comment about is a conference that I attended today. The conference was with the governor, lieutenant governor, a number of their commissioners, and, and people from across the state talking about uh, issues that affect local municipalities. And I, I want to say publicly, I need to compliment the governor, lieutenant governor, and his team this is the most engaged I've ever seen a state government involved in trying to help local municipalities. And the town of Southbridge has received million dollars, millions of dollars in grants as a result of that cooperation. Plus our chapter 70 and chapter 90 money has also increased. So I just wanted to uh, give my appreciation to the governor's team for the great job they did, at least in reaching out to municipalities in that respect. And that's all I have, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councilman, did you have a question? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you to the town manager. Thank you for um, bringing up the substance abuse and, and the um, Red Ribbon Week and all that Southbridge is doing to educate. And you did mention about educating our youth on the abuse of illegal drugs, but it's not only illegal drugs, and that should be emphasized. It sh it's also the abuse of prescription drugs, too. It, it, so. it, it, you're absolutely true. As a matter of fact, if you look at the billboard, you'll see cigarettes that are on the billboard because cigarettes are dangerous too, although they are legal. So it, the idea is to talk to your children about, you can abuse legal drugs as well as illegal drugs. So you're, you're absolutely correct. We need to deal with anything that might be harmful to both our health and to our family members. Thank you for your effort in this. You're welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> Gender item seven, swearing in presentations. We do not have any swearing in or presentations this evening. Gender item eight, citizens forum. Is there anyone from the audience that wishes to address the Southbridge School Committee? I'm the Southbridge School Committee, Jesus. That's 11 years. <laughs> the Southbridge Town Council. <laughs> please state your name and your address, yep. please. Jennifer um, Everett Street, Southbridge. Jennifer what? Hill. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to Mark DiPietro for helping me in a situation that I had last week. Um, thank you, Mark, very much. And the last thing I wanted to say is, JD, I need your phone number because the one that's on the town website is no longer in service. <laughs> and um, third, I just had to say that I just feel like as a citizen that you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't, I don't know how to really say it, but you shouldn't be criticized for coming to a meeting just to say how you feel. And that's all. That's all I had to say. But thank you, Mark. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Hill. Uh, certainly, uh, my position, I think, the town council is that nobody is uh, to be criticized about coming before us. Uh, there are issues. We'll take them all seriously, and we'll do the best we can to address any issue that comes before us. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to come before the town council? Any other citizens? Seeing none, we'll move forward. Gender item nine, vote to confirm the appointment of Jose De Leon as a full-time police officer for the town of Southbridge upon successful completion of all medical and physical testing as required by the Human Resources Civil Service Department. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just briefly, because I'm going to let the police chief go through each of the individual candidates. I just want to say that it was, it was uh, a pleasure to interview all the candidates that we had for the open position of police officer. We had a great deal of candidates that we interviewed. Uh, myself, the chief, the HR director, uh, went through these applicants, and it was amazing to see the quality of the people that want to serve the town of Southbridge. You will see from the chief's description tonight that we have three quality people uh, that are before us, uh, before this town council for final adoption. 
And uh, I just wanted to thank the chief and the HR director for their involvement in the interviews. And I think it was a great process, uh, and the candidates did very well. Thank you. Chief Whitson. If I could, good evening, members of the council, Mr. Chair, Mr. Town Manager. Um, these three positions here tonight, just so I can kind of backtrack a little bit on it. The first position was a vacancy created as a result of a police officer that recently retired. He just came off the books in June. Uh, he, was almost, he was struck and killed, almost killed in a motor vehicle accident way back in August of 2016, but that's finally played out and he's now on a disability. We have a sergeant that submitted his official retirement notice for April of 2019, which will create another vacancy. And then we have a third officer that is going to be going to another agency and that's scheduled to happen within the next few weeks. So these three positions are existing in my budget. Um, at a previous meeting we approved, or the council approved, a $20,000 line item to get these candidates into an academy early. So when one of my police officers retires in April, they just swap slots essentially, and there's no gaps in coverage. So with that said, if I could through you, Mr. Chair, the first candidate, Jose De Leon, he's a local candidate. He's an Air Force uh, veteran. He served in Kuwait, Jordan, amongst many other places in the world. And with that, he's at the top of the civil service list. He's currently enrolled at a uh, community college, working on his associate's degree. He's been an auxiliary officer with us for the past three, three years, almost four years now. And with that said, and you guys hear me say this all the time, uh, he completed 315 hours of intensive and exhaustive training at a reserve academy. He paid his tuition, paid for his uniform, his equipment, his books. It's about a six-month process, a couple nights a week. He did all that in his own time, on his own dime, never asked for anything. Um, he's currently working armed security. He's bilingual, fluent in Spanish and English. He's been on our civil service list before. Um, we've went with other candidates in the past, and Mr. De Leon has done every single thing that we've asked him to do since being passed, and I credit him for that, and I highly recommend him for a position. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous of all present. If we could just vote to confirm. Okay, I got you. Okay. Did you want to say something? No, no, I'll, I'll no. say that. Item 10, vote to confirm the appointment of Angel Rosario as a full-time police officer for the town of Southbridge <clears throat> upon the successful completion of all medical and physical testing as required by the Human Resources Civil Service Department. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Chief Woodson. Now, if I could again through you, Mr. Chair. Second candidate, Mr. Rosario, is also a local candidate. He's got a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Framingham State. He also played baseball there. He was an intern with the Massachusetts State Police while he was attending college. He was a public safety officer at our local hospital. He worked at UINC in the Upward Bound Program, helping kids transition from high school to secondary education or post-education. Currently working at the Worcester County House of Correction. When he was in their academy, he was their class president, which says something about his leadership skills and how we can develop him into a future leader. And he has an impeccable background. I highly recommend this candidate for the position. Okay, any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? The unanimous of all present. January 11, vote to confirm the appointment of Willie Burnett as a full-time police officer for the town of Southbridge upon successful completion of all medical and physical testing as required by Human Resources Civil Service. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Chief Woodson. And for the third candidate, also a local candidate, bachelor degree in criminal justice from Westfield State University. He worked for the Southern Worcester County Educational Collaborative for just about four years as a crisis intervention specialist. He's currently a campus police officer for the Worcester Recovery Center and Hospital. He's currently in an auxiliary academy, again, 315 hours he took on the challenge, paid the tuition, paid the equipment, books, dedicated his time from now until well after Christmas. But fortunately for him, tonight he's coming here before you for a full-time position. So I told him not to withdraw from the Reserve Academy yet because nothing's been approved. Um, impeccable background again, and I highly recommend him. Thank you. Any discussion? Council Nash. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you. Uh, I think you may have already said it, or the town manager may have, but once again, the police chief, Shane Woodson, has done a great job vetting out top candidates and prospects for serving the town of Southbridge. I've been through each of their credentials. Very impressed. I'm sorry I didn't uh, make the PPP meeting, but I'm sure that Council Amanda's committee voted favorably in all instances. And uh, just think it needs to be said. Once again, great Thank job. You. Thank you. Okay. 
On behalf of the council, I'd like to thank all the family and friends that are here tonight to witness this event of your uh, uh, family member being appointed to the police department. Uh, I'd like to echo to the chief uh, his sentiments about the quality of candidates that you have brought forward. I said this at the PPP meeting that as a retired police chief looking at these individuals and interviewing these individuals, they would certainly be the type of individuals that I would appoint as a police chief. So I commend the chief on this. And to the families, uh, this is just the first step. Just want to echo that. The academy is a rigorous academy. It takes a lot of time. They have to be squared away. So just be prepared that this is the easy, easy part of the, uh, of the journey. But I look forward um, to seeing you uh, three individuals on the streets, um, knowing some of you, I know that your desire is to give back to the town of Southbridge. Uh, the police department has a strong tradition in the Cops and Kids program that I think is a vital link. And I, I just uh, knowing you, that uh, you will fall on that long tradition and keep it going. So with that, uh, I thank you very much. Councilor Steves. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I said a quick question to, um, to the chief. Um, since we're, yeah. since uh, Mr. Burnett is currently in this, the um, auxiliary academy, is there any way he can just transfer straight over to the full-time academy? No, the training no. is, uh, it's like apples to oranges, for lack of a better way to put it. A reserve academy to a full-time academy is night and day. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping that we could save some time, but me, me too. <laughs> okay, Councilor Adams, just make sure we vote on them. Oh, like the last <laughs> one. I'm <laughs> uh, just making sure. We're Sound just like wrapping, we're wrapping things up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, we'll right. So yeah, so uh, Chief, after we vote on this, if you could introduce each one individually for the public, um, and then have them proceed. Okay. Sure. Any further discussion? With that, all those in favor of the appointment of Willie Burnett. Thank you. Chief. Thank you. Our first candidate, Jose de Leon. Second candidate would be Angel Rosario. Chief. With that, we will now move into two appointments to the fire department. First, before you start, Chief, I'd just like to say how great it is to see <coughs> Southbridge uh, individuals being appointed to these positions. So, Chief, uh, first we'll make the motion, then uh, the uh, manager, and then the Chief. Item 12, vote to confirm the appointment of Joshua Brackett of Southbridge, Massachusetts as a permanent full-time firefighter EMTB for the town of Southbridge pending medical clearance and his continued employment is contingent upon successful completion of the Massachusetts Physical Abilities Test, PAT, when that test becomes available. Is there a motion? There's a motion and a second. Second. Okay, Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, just quickly, uh, if you like the last ones, you can like these two, too, because they're both Southbridge natives, and we appreciate their uh, involvement in the town. Both of them are called firefighters. And what's great here is that we're giving guys who have been actively engaged with our fire department as call firemen and moving them up to become actual firemen. So we appreciate that. Again, I want to thank the interim chief for his work during the interview process and our HR director. They both did a great job. We have two outstanding candidates, and I'm looking forward to seeing them over at the fire department. Chief? Uh, good evening, uh, Council, uh, Council Chair, and uh, Town Manager. Uh, thank you for having us come here tonight. This is really important for us to uh, continue to fill the open positions that we have within the Fire Department. 
Uh, I'll start like Chief Woodson did. Uh, these two positions that are currently being filled are uh, vacated positions from uh, Lieutenant Cantara, uh, who left to uh, another job in, in a nearby town. Uh, and the second position is a uh, injured on duty uh, employee that uh, two years, uh, almost three years ago, actually uh, had an incident at a uh, structure fire uh, and had uh, a knee injury, which uh, subsequently has opened his position. He is uh, off the books for us right now. Uh, Joshua Brackett, uh, he's, he's, he's a current member of our Call Fire Department, just as the manager has said. Uh, he has been a member of the Fire Department for, since 2003. Uh, Josh has been coming to assist us with uh, staffing on our department callbacks for the emergency 911 stuff. Uh, and he's also, over the last couple of months, uh, really putting an effort into coming in and uh, filling our shifts that we have open within the department. Uh, he does have Firefighter 1-2 certification. Uh, he is an active EMT for our department. Uh, he currently works for MedStar uh, Ambulance Service at this time. Uh, I hope to uh, hire Joshua to a uh, career fire department with your approval tonight. Thank you. Councilor Steve? Do you have a um, yeah, just one quick question. Most of them mentioned uh, when the PAT test becomes available. When will that be? Uh, so just before PPP, <coughs> literally one hour before the PPP meeting last week, I was notified from the State Human Resources Department uh, that the PAT facility, the actual structure of the building, was placed, uh, was considered condemned. Uh, oh, and the, <laughs> pending uh, a new location, an evaluation of the current building, if they can fix it to, to do it. So right now, at this point, uh, we need some personnel to fill our roles because we're, we're very, we're, uh, have some open shifts. Uh, it's a, the PPP had reworded the, uh, the, the uh, I guess we'd say the uh, clause, the, the motion to make it that would, they would complete the PAT as soon as it becomes available. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with that because, I mean, they're already called firefighters anyway. So That's correct. It's pretty obvious they have the physical abilities to do it. So I was just curious. Yep. Thank you, Council Steve. Thank you for that question. It was a topic that was brought up, and the original motion would have precluded them from actually uh, being able to get right into those roles, given the fact that the abilities test is for the academy portion of it. Uh, I think we all felt comfortable, given the fact that they were current employees right. on the fire department, that we could move forward because of the critical staffing levels that we have at the fire department. Mm -hmm. Any yes. further discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Opposed? The unanimous vote present. Thank you. Item 13, vote to confirm the appointment of Dylan Langlais of Southbridge, Mass. As a permanent <coughs> full-time firefighter EMTB for the town of Southbridge, pending medical clearance, his continued employment is also contingent upon successful completion of the Massachusetts Physical Abilities Test, PAT, when that test becomes available. Is there a second? second. Motion and second. Discussion? Chief? Yeah, so uh, Dylan Langlois, uh, he is a current member of our call department in good standing uh, since two, uh, 2013. Uh, he, excuse me, let's go back to the other side. Uh, Dylan has been coming to assist us again, just, so, just like our previous uh, person. Uh, filling in on 911 calls, uh, responding back to the station, also <laughs> filling in shifts when we're uh, at low staffing levels. Um, he, uh, he is also firefighter one and two certified. He's an active EMT and has gone through all the orientation process, uh, does do ambulance calls with us just like Joshua does. Uh, he currently works for the Southbridge School Department. Um, at this point, I really would like to hope that you guys would recommend Dylan for a full-time career position. Any further discussion? And, okay, Chief, thank you for bringing these two candidates forward. Uh, I certainly appreciate the speed in which you had, uh, had done this to, again, address the needs of the department. This is by far just a small sliver of what your needs are. So thank you for that. Um, and if you could, after we take the vote, if you could do the same thing as the uh, police chief did, just introduce them yes, and sir. have them come forward, okay? Any further discussion? I'll, oh, Actually, I'll I do have one quick question to the chief. Um, has, have you started advertising for, for more new call firefighters? Yes, we have done yeah, both okay. for career and call. Okay, cool. Yep. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Opposed? And Mr. Well, President. Congratulations, gentlemen. If you want to answer this. This will be uh, Joshua Brackett. Dylan Langlace.
Thank you, Chief, and we look forward to uh, seeing you in the next couple weeks with additional appointments, I'm sure. Most definitely. Thank you. <laughs> Agenda item 14, vote to confirm the town manager's recommendation to appoint Rebecca Wetnicka to the Commission on Disabilities for a three-year term, effective immediately through June 30th, 2019. Is there a motion? So Second. Okay. Councilor Nash. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you, first of all, <coughs> the agenda does not spell Ms. Wetnicka's first name correctly. It has two C's, Rebecca, R-E-B-E-C-C-A. Thank you. Uh, and that is documented in her application of board interest form that was submitted. Um, second of all, uh, I want to thank the town manager for bringing this candidate forward uh, through the Education Human Services Subcommittee meeting on September 12th, where uh, she was recommended unanimously favorable. Okay. Councilor Nash, you want to just hold yeah, We'll sure. just take a quick second yep. so that they can clear the room. Absolutely. Yeah. Always a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. The way to clear room. <laughs> <laughs> Set now. Yeah, I, I'll finish really quickly, Mr. All Chairman. Right, thank, thank you. you. Uh, once again, I appreciate the town manager's uh, suggestion of bringing Ms. Wednicka forward, and it was favorably unanimous uh, with the Education and Human Services Subcommittee. Uh, I once again thanks Councillor Adams, who serves as secretary for that subcommittee, for his meeting minute notes, which are uh, quite simply uh, expressive of the committee's sentiment to bring this candidate forward. Thank you. Thank you. Council Manning? Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. This is a three-year term, so that should be June 30th, 2021. You, you, um, you, you mentioned 2019. Yeah, yeah then, uh, sorry about that. No? I wasn't sure what that title was. I know. <laughs> okay, thank you. So it's through 2021. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous vote present. Agenda item 15. Uh, this item was the vote to accept the donation from Claire Burtz. It was put on this agenda because of the timeliness of trying of making sure it went through PPP, agreed at PPP that this was gonna be postponed, so we'll withdraw and uh, bypass this agenda item to a future date, okay? okay. <clears throat> item 16, vote to transfer, transfer $46.76 from Town Council Reserve Account 1.132.5781 to town prior year unpaid bill number .0389.5899.133.9095 to pay an invoice from FY 2017 to Correctional Industries for the purchase of town sales. So moved. Second. Discussion? Council Steves. Um, yeah, that was on, that was one of the things on GenGov's agenda. Um, just a quick brief here. Um, the town manager said that it was necessary because the inspection department didn't pay a chair of a bill to print town seal magnets for vehicles in fiscal 2017. Um, this was these were these were seals that were being used in a variety of town vehicles, mostly DPW, um, and most of the uh, most of the rest of the bill for some reason got paid, but for some reason that section just didn't, and it amounted to 46.76. It was passed unanimously. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous of all present. Item 17, vote to transfer $7,989.24 from Town Council Reserve number 1.132.5781 to tie a pri town prior year unpaid bill number 3.589.5899.133.9095 to pay two invoices from FY 2017 to the University of Massachusetts Medical School for Medicaid bill and costs. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. 
Council Steves. Um, yeah, this was also on GenGov's agenda, and to summarize that, um, the manager mentioned that this was, uh, again, similar to what we just talked about a second ago. Um, in this case, the town pays 4.25% of the school system's Medicaid reimbursement um, for administration, administrative costs to UMass, who actually does the billing, apparently. Um, but in this case, uh, it was kind of un uncertain whether we ever got the bill at all. Karen thinks that we didn't. Um, and that uh, uh, Mr. the town manager noticed that the council reserve at this point has 81650 bucks in it, so this is coming from council reserve. Um, at the time, uh, Denise Clements mentioned that the council used to vote on these, the sums we paid for these costs as contract, but it has happened in, happened in some time. Um, we're going to ask for info, information on how this bill compares to what we had planned on. Um, she, uh, the town manager said he'd email it to the councillors. Um, we recommended it unanimously. Thank you. Council Manor. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman, through you. This is fiscal year 2017, but the invoice date is 2017. Should it be fiscal year 2018? Aren't we always a year ahead with the fiscal years like that? The invoice dates are both 630, 2017. So it should be fiscal year 2000. And this bill was from fiscal year 18. She's correct. Yeah, she is right. Is Actually, What's the bill date? it does state here originally one of the other sub pages says it was received in June 20th of 2017 now. Fiscal 2016 direct services cost report of the 7317 and then you add in the 60, 671, which was received 620 of 17. And these are, dated, these are dated June 17 and then the cover letter is dated 17, of June, yeah. August 18th, <coughs> August 2018. So. Right, well, they're past due invoices, yeah, that's they why. Are. Exactly. Right, so 2017 would be fiscal year 2018. Well, not if the bill is June not 20th, 2017. Right. We received it's it the last in June day of the year. It's June 30th, 2017. June 30th? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it would be fiscal year 2017. Okay. It would go I just, okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We're still, yep. Just doesn't Any further that. discussion? Hmm. All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous vote, President. Vote to ratify the newest amendment to our health services agreement with Harrington Occupational Health Services Comfort Care of Southbridge, dated August 28, 2018, with new rates in effect October 1, 2018. So moved. Second. Discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous yeah, all present. <clears throat> Vote to ratify the standard contract for the FY 2018 CDBG grant in the amount of $825,000 from the Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development and authorize the town manager to sign associated grant documents. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Council. Mr. Chair, uh, just for the sake of uh, folks who will be watching this on camera, if, if you or the town manager could elaborate, on this so folks can understand what this is actually about. Okay, this did go through plan and development. I'll refer it to Council Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Councilor, just was gonna discuss that the majority of this is gonna go to phase two of Central Street parking. Uh, phase one is already in, in motion over there. Uh, the, like I said, I think about 600 and some odd thousand dollars is gonna go right to uh, the Central Street parking for next year. Also, it pays for one of the salaries, uh, one of the employees here in town, I believe the inspector, one of the inspectors and also some administrative costs. These are things that uh, come about every year for CDBG funds. Um, in the month of September, we kind of get everything together, or at least the economic team and the town manager get things to get together, uh, figure out what we could, they could fund this money with that will be coming from the state. Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Um, to, I don't know, the town manager. So in years past, this used to come to council, and we used to um, vote to see where we wanted the money going. And I think I brought this up before. So wh who, who made the decision that $620-some-thousand goes to Central Street Parking? Mr. Manager? So I believe the process here is that there's a public hearing where anyone in the, the town could come and discuss the issues that are before it. The grant is actually put together by the economic development team, Rosemary and Rose, I all know. them. Yep. They put it together and they bring it through for a public hearing where everyone can attend. Mm -hmm. uh, you are correct in, in um, I think Councillor Clements did bring that up about that. And I'll defer to Rosemary as to uh, how it actually came together, the specifics of the plan, um, actually how it was put together. Hi. Um, 
So this has already come before you guys when we applied for the grant um, in the, the same level of detail um, last, um, well not last March, but this past March, it was due the first or second week of March. So um, it was fully vetted before that time. There was a, you know, the subcommittee meeting, then the town council meeting. Right before the town council meeting, there was a public hearing where we gathered comments. Um, so, uh, but I'll comment, uh, uh, you know, once again, as we discussed back then, that um, a, a, the lion's share of this money went towards phase two of the Central Street parking lot um, facelift um, because phase one is um, we got, you know, a big chunk of that for this year. So we needed to follow it up and, and complete the work. Okay, thank you. So hopefully next year or fiscal year 2019, that will come in front of the council and that can be discussed on how to maybe disperse the money. We're, we are, we've done it in the past. If you look at it, I mean, we used to get a spreadsheet. Councilor Steves, he remembers it clearly. We used to get a spreadsheet and then everybody would discuss it. And um, then we'd have businesses, they'd apply to see if they could get some of this money, and then it was voted on where it would go. Mr. Manager? No, thank you. And, and, and as Rosemary said, it does come to council in the application process. So you see what we're going to apply for and all the, the outline of what's going to be spent this year. So you wouldn't have an opportunity there. But, but this is something me and Rosemary were talking about. If councilors want to give input to the economic development team as to what should be put into that grant, I think it was actually Councilor Adams we were talking about that with, but please, uh, send to Rosemary any of your suggestions for what you might want to be put into that grant process. Right. We would be happy to hear them and discuss those as well. So, yes, but Rosemary should come forward to us too and yes. give us, afford us, the council, the opportunity. I mean, if you just go back in the minutes and look how it has been done and how it's been allocated throughout the town, some of it one year may go like, $75,000 may go to a nonprofit. They have to apply for it. Mm -hmm. um, some may go to signs, some may go to sidewalks. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is all, I mean, if you'd like me to forward you some spreadsheets, I'll be more than happy to do that. But mm -hmm. that was just, I mean, and I think I, I brought it up at the beginning of can the I, process too. So. Can I just respond all. to that, Chair? So there is $44,000 and a little bit more that is gonna be going to signs and awnings. Um, and possible facades. If you see the breakdown there, that's the commercial rehab money that uh, we will solicit for applications from business and building owners that want to apply, as we have done many years in a row. Right. Just, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to. No, I just wanted to re argue, respond. But to I'm you. just saying that in the past we used to get the spreadsheet. This is how much money we have, and I understand that this money is being allocated towards the Central Street parking. But in years past, we used to get that spreadsheet, and. I mean, we used to, do we want it to go to a nonprofit? Do we want it to go um, maybe like to one of the streets? And, and one year it went to Chestnut Street and they did the sidewalks yes. up there and stuff and overlook. And yes. so that, that's just, that, that's all. It used right. to come to the town. We didn't have to go to the economic development. They brought it to us. Yes. So, and that's all. That's all. Thank you. I'm done. Yeah, I, I think just to clarify, I think she's referring to going. For I can't the, for hear the, you. I think I think if if I understand you properly, you're actually talking more about for the for the future fiscal year when we when yes, we apply for, for this, the next not for this one because yes. I know I yes. understand okay. it, okay. but in in the future, but yeah. I mean, back in March or April, whenever you had this, I think I brought this up too. I agree. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, future, we'll take a look at it. We can talk offline about it and, and come up with a process so that. Your concerns are there was a process in place. Well, That's about what whatever the process was, so you can sure. educate us. I appreciate it. So, and just for clarification, um, do you have a rough idea of when the when the public hearings are likely to be for this year? Um, They're usually in like January or something, aren't they? We it can vary. Um, somewhere around, you know, and in, in the deadline actually varies, but um, usually in December is when we have the public hearings okay. actually. Thank you. Do, do you think we can have that uh, here as part of the council agenda? Because may, maybe we'd get more people to pay attention to it. Because I know from previous experience going to a couple of CDBG hearings where um, back before your time actually, I was actually literally sitting in a conservation commission meeting and they dragged us all over to have somebody sign in so that they actually had a hearing by yeah. presence. So. Now there were a fair, there were, I think you and um, Councillor 
Clements and Nash, if I'm not mistaken, were at the public hearing. I believe so, yeah. Um, exactly. And we, you had asked us to schedule it right before town council meeting so that it would be a little more convenient for town councilors to come to. And, uh, and the public can see it too. Yeah. Yes. Right. Councilman? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So there seems to be a process already in place, and, and it sounds like it already happened or it may not have happened. So if anything can come my way, maybe I can work that out through the subcommittee meeting uh, as well, especially with new business. Um, we can definitely discuss that um, and, and try to see if we can work out a better process. But uh, sure. it sounds like most of this stuff was already marked uh, for certain projects and, and salaries, and, and sounds like there was discussion about this. Oh, there was. Okay. There was. Right. We're, we're talking like for future years. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Maybe we can right. the plan right. development and we'll, we'll hash that out. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous mm -hmm. all present. <clears throat> Agenda item 20, vote to refer the amendments to the Southbridge Zoning Bylaw and MAP as filed with the Town Clerk's Office dated September 14, 2018, back to the Planning Board to receive public comment at public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. So with that, uh, we did receive a letter from, or I did as chairman, um, about the study and revision of zoning bylaw. Uh, so we should all have the attached hearing draft. Um, in consideration of the zone bylaw and map amendments, the plan board is ready for directions from the town council to hold a public hearing, tentatively scheduled for October 3rd. I'll turn this over to Ken for any comments he may make. Sure. Um, good evening, councilors. Um, so as um, the, the chair did discuss um, that we do have a tentative public hearing scheduled for October 3rd. This is a formality in the process in regards to zoning bylaws being adopted by a town. Um, the planning board, as you know, has been um, with, a consult with the advice of consultants and um, our economic development and planning office has been working with our consultants to revise and restate our Southbridge zoning bylaws. Um, as you may be aware, this is a document fra that was adopted in 1985 um, and um, has been amended since as recent as the um, medical marijuana and registered marijuana dispensary um, bylaw. Um, so this will replace the bylaw and um, with that said, it, it, it restates everything that's currently in the bylaw and organizes it in a way that is um, useful for the um, users of the bylaw. So that would be our um, residents, our business community, um, and of the such. Um, I think with, this, with that said, we, um, and this will be you know, presented to you in a presentation in full uh, what's the um, planning board, for the planning board as well as for the town council. Um, prior to your first reading. Um, but um, yeah, if, if there's any questions in regards to the process of it going back to the planning board or any um, considerations that we should be making for the planning board, um, I'm uh, here for any questions. I would also suggest that um, you attend the meeting. It'll be right here in um, the council chambers at 645 on uh, October 3rd, which is next Wednesday. Thank you. Councilor Adams. Ken, I just appreciate you and your team working on this. I look forward to reading 75 pages. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I appreciate all the hard work and how, many, how much time it's taken to, to finally update this uh, bylaw. And uh, I know all the hours that you guys have put in, so I appreciate it. And I'm sure everybody appreciates it. We won't appreciate it on those three days that we have to read it, but it, it's about time. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Councilman Nash. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you. I'll echo that same sentiment. Great job, but I'll also um, give credit where it's due. Councilor Steves and former Councilor Clements have participated in the process and kept the council very well informed as their participation. And uh, I do appreciate that from Councilor Steves in particular, occasional old okay. emails and conversations and mentions at council. Mm -hmm. So looking through this was a little bit easier because I wasn't able to participate. But uh, thank you very much. We look forward to moving this along. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Councilor Steve. One quick question. Um, did, were, did, does this document include the, uh, the last co comments that were 
submitted via the matrix? I don't know. Um, Rosemary, maybe my North understanding, North Rosemary, um, and maybe Rosemary can um, attest to that with her conversations with our consultant, is that um, if they were not large policy changes that haven't been discussed in our yeah. working groups, um, those were not included in this right. bylaw. I think it's going to be important during the public hearing if these issues come out, those are probably things that the planning board would start looking at or, you know, interested citizens um, to look at amendments to hopefully an adopted new bylaw. Um, but I think um, in regards to the last set of um, comments via the last matrix, I believe right. they were um, minor um, type of changes, not policy changes. Mostly, yeah. yeah. I was curious, okay. Oh, and also, when are we, when are we actually going to see, because um, I know Daphne and Judy are supposed to be giving us a report that goes with the things like the, the planning board regulations and a couple of other things that are not directly zoning bylaw. When, when are we gonna see those? Um, they wanted to get through the zoning bylaw first. Okay. Um, and then they will do the rules and the regulations for both the ZBA and the planning board, and they expect those to be um, maybe two drafts before completion. Um, but that is, you know, that's part of their contract that they're mm -hmm. going to complete that along with the zoning bylaw. But the zoning bylaw was the, the real big thing to right. get through. Right. Um, and I just want to mention something. Um, so both Ken and I um, provided kind of a, a summary of the global changes and the individual changes to the zoning bylaw mm -hmm. um, as just an alternative if um, you felt it was appropriate to do as a reading versus 80 pages. Um, just wanted to bring that to your attention. Okay. I did receive that. I haven't seen gonna, it actually. But. No, it was sent to me. Okay. So, <laughs> well, I'll review it with legal counsel to see if that's actually permitted or not. I, Feel that it's not, but we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully it can be. Yeah. You know, actually, Mr. Chairman, or I don't know if we, one of us would do it or you guys would do it, but maybe we could do that quickly on on cable access as a as a sit down sit down maybe with the manager or somebody just to just to do a quick show on it to summarize it all for people that quite frankly don't want to sit through three hours of reading. <laughs> um, and I did want to mention to you that uh, we've been trying to schedule. Um, kind of a, a, a interview with a staff member of the cable department oh, cool. and interviewing Ken and one of the consultants to kind of bring out the, the kind of the high points of what the changes were and there's been some illness and a couple of things but we're still planning to do that hopefully before the, um, well it might be actually after the public hearing. But in, but in time for that reading. Okay, cool. Okay. So Great. the point is to push information out there and make it as under, understandable as possible. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, so all those in favor of referring the amendments to the suburb zoning bylaw and map as filed with the town clerk's office dated September 14th, 2018, back to the planning board to receive public comment at the public hearing. I know we had a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. Do you have further discussion? No. 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 All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> Opposed? No, I was just re restating that we're referring it back to yeah. the planning board. Just want to make sure that that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your work. And we can talk about doing a cable program with Council Adams and maybe we can do it together. Okay? <laughs> All right. Council's forum. Councilman, start with you tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for you. Um, not really much to say. I just apologize for not being as involved these last few weeks. Um, I, there's been some life changes for me. Um, I am not going to be able to make it to the um, joint school committee on October 9th meeting. Um, that is a late night at work for me. And also October 3rd, I'm not going to be able to make it for the public hearing for the zoning because that's another late night for me at work. So um, I do apologize on that. Um, and um, oh, lawn and leaf. When is the, the lawn and leaf materials? I, I, when's that going to start? Lawn and leaf? Yeah, the lawn and leaf pickup. I, I don't know the date off the top of my head. I'm trying to Mr. Chairman. I don't know the date off the top of my head. I'd be happy to send that to you guys tomorrow on email. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, because I, I mean, the leaves are starting to change and they're going to fall, and before you know it, it'll be snowing. So, 
Okay, and um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I believe the last hazardous waste day at the landfill is this weekend, Saturday, the 29th. I correct. Am I correct on that? I think I think so. Check the website. I believe it is the last one, and this may be the last one. So, anybody out there, if you have stuff you need to um, take care of that needs to go to the landfill for the hazardous waste day, this is probably the last one. So, regardless of whether the trash is picked up or not, because the landfill will be closed. So, until we make alternative arrangements, Councilor Nash. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I will actually, for once be abbreviated tonight because I can barely breathe through my nose. So first of all, thank you to the Town Manager's uh, Substance Abuse Advisory Group. Uh, it's a great panel. I'm glad to see the progress that's been made with the step that was taken with the billboard, the flyers. Uh, great effort. Congratulations to that group, especially to Ron and to Deputy Chief Jose Diggy. Uh, he deserves a lot of credit. He has assembled with you a fantastic group of individuals, and I've been honored to participate by attending some of your meetings and, and listening and learning. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to say tonight is that uh, I will be able to attend the joint school committee meeting with town council on October 9th. Uh, I met with my doctor last week and they do expect that I'll be able to participate in relatively simple activities such as go to meetings. So after my surgery on the 5th, I will be able to uh, be here for that and I have scheduled that meeting for EHS on 10-10 and I do recognize that Councilor Daniel may not be at that meeting, but we had to get this in before the next town council meeting. So with that, thank you for uh, for a good evening tonight. Good good luck with your uh, thank you. upcoming surgery. Councilor DePietro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, not much other than the, uh, I thank you to everyone that participated in the, uh, the fall event at the Common. Uh, my granddaughter had an absolute ball there. Uh, it was a very, very nice event, very well run. Thank you. you. Council Morales. I am all set, thank you. All set. Council Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, this Autumn Fest was, was pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, quite a few people out there. Um, same words here as uh, uh, Council Member. It was, it was very successful and I appreciate all the hard work everybody put into it. Um, tomorrow night, the Board of Health will be having a um, working meeting and uh, I saw a comment on social media about The Walking Dead because it, it is a zombie apocalypse and what's the purpose behind it? And I was part of that process. And uh, it, we actually got that, we received that from the state and we kind of utilized that uh, for an Enoch station and an incident command um, just in case if anything ever happened within the town borders. And uh, the, the Walking Dead was coming from uh, Sturbridge itself. So um, just to answer a few questions. Um, on uh, 927, uh, they'll, they'll be having a meeting, uh, downtown improvement uh, about Hook, Foster, and Central Street. That uh, has been a long time coming. It's part of the uh, tip list right now to, for the state to provide funds to an area that has uh, um, normally has seen quite a few accidents and uh, issues down there. So. Um, they just want to keep it in the forefront of the town and within the state itself. So please attend if you can. Um, and on October 7th, it's National Firefighters Memorial Day. Flags are at half staff. If you're on ship, it's half mass, and that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilor Daniel. Last Wednesday, I was able to meet with uh, Councilor Nash, and we went through various parts of town looking at um, areas of concern that citizens have, uh, have made about uh, traffic enforcement and stop signs and, and matters as such. As a result, um, on Friday, I met with Chief Woodson for a considerable amount of time, and uh, aside from getting a tour of the police station, which was remarkable, what a wonderful facility we have. Um, I was able to speak with him about uh, placement of speed limit signs and uh, the placement of those electronic signs, the workings of the traffic commission, uh, and various other concerns that the citizens have had. Um, he's working very hard. He's aware of these concerns. Um, and he's, he's making efforts to deal with things like uh, speed enforcement. And um, I, think, I think residents will see a, a definite change 
in uh, what's going on. We have um, officers that are strictly dedicated to traffic control, to traffic uh, control, and um, I think when, after speaking with him, I feel very good about the efforts that are being made. Um, on a different matter, I will be out of state in early October, so if people are trying to get a hold of me, um, I won't be around for a little while, uh, but I will definitely be back for the next council meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Steves? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a couple of things. First off, I, uh, most, many of you probably got this in the mail today, or if you don't, you didn't, you got it, you'll get it in the next couple of days. Just a reminder that uh, the voter registration deadline to vote in the November 6th election is October 17th. So if you're not registered to vote, well, if you're not registered to vote, you probably didn't get one of these. But if you, uh, if you aren't registered, you can come down to town hall before that date and register. It's October 17th again. Um, also, uh, on Thursday, unfortunately, it conflicts with what Dave was talking about. Um, the Jacob Edwards Library is having a, a talk on Franco-American history with a translation of Felix Gatineau's book. And as, if you remember a little bit of our own town history, he was a, a key player in the early 20th century here in town and wrote in French, and they finally, finally translated it in English after a century. So that might be interesting. That's at 6.30, and I think, I think Dave's event, the downtown intersection improvements thing is at 6, isn't it? Okay. And um, also, I wanted to mention that there is an art exhibit closing um, from 12 to, 12 to 4 at the Art Center on Sunday, the 30th. And also, I'm in the process of trying to organize a ballot question forum for Thursday, the 18th of October, um, which would be at, at, up here in the chambers um, at 6 p.m., I'm trying to get trying to get contacts from all all three of the ballot questions on both sides. I've got a couple who have already said yes. Um, I'm still waiting to hear from a couple of the others. So hopefully that will happen. And uh, that's it. That's all I had at the moment. Um, as far as the next meeting date, uh, we have Monday. We have obviously we've got the the Tuesday the 9th with the town council and school committee meeting here at seven here in the chambers. Um, and the next regular council meeting is Monday, October 15th at seven here in the chambers. Thank you. Item 23, vote to enter an executive session in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21, Subsection 3. A, discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body. And B, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 39B, Section 23B, Subsection 3, to discuss strategy and conduct bargaining with non-union personnel. If discussion in the open session will have detrimental effect on the position of the governmental body, if the and if the chair declares to adjourn from executive session. Second. Roll call, Madam Secretary. Councillor Adams? Yes. Councillor Daniel? Yes. Councillor DiPietro? Yes. Councillor Jovan? Yes. Sorry. Councillor Mana? Yes. Councillor Morales? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor Steves? Yes. Thank you, Gus. That question on the Medicaid, did you get any information from Karen on that? Did you get the answer to that question? I did not.